Hi, this is Craig from Captain America Projects. Today, we're going to show you how to make an awesome sliding barn door using old closet doors and pallet boards. Okay, first, I'm going to show you how we mounted the top board that we're going to put the track on. So we're getting ready to put the track in. So what we're going to do is you need a piece of wood here. It makes it look nicer too than just having it, the spacers go right into the drywall. So for this strip of wood, we've got about 10 foot length. For about 20 bucks, I bought an entire bunk bed frame that had really good quality wood. Okay, so we've got the two boards cut and mounted to the wall. You can see where they meet there. Make sure your boards are level. So there you go, we figured out a good way to do it. So um, this, there was a stud not in place where it should have been here. So we actually just screwed it to the corner. Anywhere you have a corner, you should have some studs there. So we got those at a corner. We screwed them in at about a 45 degree angle. Then we've got uh, two, these are pretty good strong outdoor screws. Uh, they are three and a half inches long to make sure they get through the drywall and into the studs. Next, I'll show you how we mounted the track to our board and how we made the holes for the spacers. So we're laying out the metal beam here. We're gonna first do a punch to put where we're gonna make our holes and then we're gonna use the drill press. Mark it and then do the punch. Starting with the 5 16 bit for the kind of a pilot hole. And then we'll switch over to the 3 8 So we got this nice drill press to make our holes. Got to clamp down. It's a little grease or something. Just a little oil. oil. There we go. Swapping the bit to the larger bit to finish off those holes. We started putting our metal bar up. Um, what we did is we put in, we drilled the, our first hole, and then we put in one screw loosely just to hold it. Before we put the spacer in, this step I, I forgot to tape. So before we put the spacer in, we put one screw loosely in the hole and you don't want to put the spacer in at first because you want this flush with the board so you can mark your other holes. So we put that one in, then we used a pin and in each hole we made a mark on our wood where we were going to put them. So the metal was flush on the board while we did that. So we marked all our holes and then uh, you can see there's the last hole that we may not need. That might be for the spacer. Um, anyway, so now we've loosely put in all our bolts. They're just barely in, just hand tightened, most of them, um, just to kind of make sure it all yeah, lines up and everything. I tightened each bolt until I heard it, the spacer kind of digging into the wood. As soon as I heard it digging, I stopped. Figured that's good and tight. So here's what it looks like looking down the track. Here we go. Feels pretty strong. <laughs> Next, we'll show you how we used the base of a Noah's Ark closet door to make the base for our entire door. And I'm gonna show you how we built an outer frame and then how we filled it in with pallet board. A set of closets with animals all over it. I bought it from Sandy, who always has the coolest used stuff. Tell me about this door, Sandy. Well, actually, it's Noah's Ark. Oh. And it came from Woodburn Auction House. It was a score and a find, and I love it, and I'm glad you love it too. Awesome. Okay, so here's our closet doors, the back of them. Um, as you can see on the front, we've got the beautiful Noah's Ark design because we're going to make it like a barn door on this side and Noah's Ark on the other side. So next we're going to disassemble these and then re-put them together as one solid piece. To keep it from splitting your wood, you need a countersink bit. 
I didn't have I didn't have one, but I had a glass cutter that's similar. So what that does it just widens the mouth of the hole. So then when your screw head head goes in, it doesn't uh, it doesn't split the wood. So as you can see, the ones where I did that are nice nice and clean with no split. Okay, so the reason you want to set the uh, when you're framing it. So this is the top of the door here. You want the top to go end to end and then the side frames below. The reason you want to do that is because it's going to create a stronger grip when you put your wheel on if you have this type of wheel. Of course some wheels attach to the top of a door. But uh, as you can see when I put the wheel on this way I can get a screw into each of the boards. That's going to be stronger than if they were both into the same board. The next thing we did is we put a 2x4 on the floor. Uh, you want to just get a little bit of lift off the floor because you don't want your uh, door dragging on the floor. You need it to hover a couple inches off. So uh, we used a little 2x4 there. We set the door on that in place and then what I did is I went ahead and put this I put the wheel on the track, then I took a pencil with the wheel on the track, the door was, the door was right here, it came up, the door came just about an inch below the track or so, I took my pencil and I marked on the door where the two holes will be, so here's where I marked them, you can see the little circle here. In here, that's where my holes were, and I went ahead and drilled out the first one. So this one's already drilled out. So if I did a good job, these should. If I did a good job, these should line up, and it looks like uh, they line up good, right where my holes are. So next, I'm going to go ahead and put my bolts. Let's see. They're a little tight, but they will go in. So. Just go ahead and screw them through, or could tap them with a hammer if I wanted. Okay, so what I did next is I've cut out a whole bunch of pallet boards here, and uh, I just kind of tossed them on here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I, I picked out a few that have real nice uh, patterns, and uh, these I'm going to cut. They're going to be the full length of the door, and then I've got a bunch of others here that I'm probably going to cut pieces off so the pieces uh, will meet so it's going to be a few full length across and then some will be like two or three pieces here it is the last piece oh, let's flip that around yeah there we go okay let's have a look here you have it beautiful so anyway there you have the full door. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue these on. So right now these are just loosely sitting here. You want to do that first so you don't want to glue anything down until you're ready. So if you look, they're all just sitting here. So I got a pretty good fit. There's cracks here and there, but that's okay because uh, that's what makes this look beautiful and rustic. Here we go. Time for gluing. Uh, the next, one of the last steps I'm going to do, this is the bottom of the door here. And when you buy these sets, they'll usually come with a guide that you attach to the floor. Uh, what the guide is, is since the door is only attached on the top, it can swing. It can kind of rock. So the guide is kind of to ensure that it stays in place. I'm going to make a space down here basically by putting a board on either side so there's like a track so that the the guide will be in between them and that'll keep the door from rocking okay so now that's finished so you can see here that we've got a nice groove down here finally this is how we lined it up on the track and head back that direction Mine in. yours is in Woo! Awesome! 
as you can see, this is a beautiful addition to the house, no matter which room you're coming from. Thanks so much for watching. Now check out our special guest appearance on our buddy Oregon Cyclists channel.